This conference will now be recorded. That's it. Oh, okay, good morning everybody. So today we'll start a, a new chapter, uh, thermal injuries. So thermal injuries, uh, examination point of view, uh, previously they have asked uh, four marks questions and few uh, two marks questions. Uh, we will see uh, some of the basic outlay of these thermal injuries. So thermal injuries, as, uh, they are the injuries, it can be caused by due to heat and due to cold. So due to cold, it can be generalized effects or it can be also local effects. So general effect of exposure to cold atmosphere will lead to hypothermia, whereas local effects of exposure to cold will lead to two types of conditions called frostbite and trench coat. Frostbite, uh, other name is due to dry cold, and trench coat is due to moist coat. We will see what are there. And then next one is due to heat. Again, they are divided into two types. One is having a generalized effect, and then one is having a local effect. General, ef general effect of exposure to hot atmosphere will cause three conditions known as heat hyperpyrexia, heat exhaustion, and then heat cramps. Whereas the local effects of heat, exposure to heat will cause uh, burns and then scalds. So scalds are mostly caused due to moist heat, whereas burns is due to dry heat, mostly flames. And then scalds, we call any hot liquids, uh, causing burns, we, we call them as scalds. So thermal injuries, this is the classification of thermal injuries. So basically thermal injuries are two types, the injuries that are caused due to cold and then the injuries that are caused due to heat. Injuries that are caused due to cold are again divided into two types, general effects and then local effects. General effects by cold is hypothermia, local effects is Fit. And then due to heat, again, they divide into two types, general effect and local effect. General effects are heat hyperparexia, heat exhaustion, heat cramps. And then local effects are burns and scars. So coming to the cold injuries. So we have trench fruit, otherwise called as immersion food. So trench food or immersion food is mostly seen in uh, soldiers uh, who are working in cold places such as Himalayas. And then as the name suggests, trench. Trench means a small gutter. You know, people will walk, soldiers will walk in a, uh, in a line and then as they walk in cold places, in a snow places, they will create a, a marks. They will create a foot marks and then um, they will have a little bit of depression in the area of walking area. So creating a trench. So that's what the name trench foot or immersion foot means. So it is due to prolonged exposure of the extremities, mostly feet to cold, moist cold of about five to eight degrees centigrade for many hours. So most of the soldiers, they will be staying there uh, guarding. So because of the extremely cold conditions, they are exposed to this uh, trench foot or immersion foot conditions. And the extremities may be sinusoidal because of the cold conditions. There is, will be sinusitis because of constriction, vasoconstriction. You know, whenever there is a cold uh, seasons, uh, in order to body to conserve the heat, uh, there will be vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction of the vessels. Uh, because of this vasoconstriction, there will be less oxygenation of the tissues leading to cyanosis. And then because of this less oxygenation and cyanosis, the toes can become uh, even necrotic if uh, they have not treated properly or even 
the person has not gone uh, to the heating condition. So necrosis with blister formation and sometimes gangrene of the tissue uh, can also be uh, seen here. So trench foot, emotional foot is called to the mostly to the soldiers working in high uh, cold places and the temperature is about five to eight degrees centigrade. It is due to vasoconstriction leading to cyanosis, which leads to less oxygenation. And then if it is further uncared, then it will leads to uh, necrosis because of the lack of oxygenation and then it will cause to blister formation and wound formation. So this is the initial finding of uh, uh, trench fruit or immersion food. You can see the reddened areas at the uh, tips and then you can see here this is the ulcers uh, which is formed in the uh, trench fruit. What is meant by frostbite? Frostbite is exposure to still further uh, low temperatures that is extreme of cold it is minus 2.5 degrees centigrade whereas there in a trench fluid is 5 to 8 degrees centigrade it is uh, frostbite is less than uh, 2.5 degrees centigrade and here the pathogenesis is vasospasm whereas in trench fruit uh, foot the pathogenesis is vasoconstriction so vasoconstriction so even if it is relieved with the heat, it will again vasodilate uh, the vessels. Whereas here it is vasospasm. Uh, you have to remember the uh, vocabulary. There it is vasoconstriction. Here it is vasospasm. And then there is paralysis of vasomotor control of blood vessels. So because of the prolonged high uh, degrees of extreme cold, which is minus 2.5 degrees centigrade which is in ice formation in a very cold icy area uh, if the person is exposing to the bare foot or bare hands then there is extreme vasospasm because the body wants to conserve the heat the method of conserving the heat the body is by vasospasm or vasoconstriction but here it is more so vasospasm is there and then if it is further exposed for a prolonged time the normal mechanism of the body control preservation will cause will be deranged so there will be paralysis of vasomotor uh, control of blood vessels and then uh, the clinical features as you can see the skin will be ice cold and then there will be erythematous patches over the digital uh, or the distal and exposed parts such as ear nose finger and toes so the exposed parts mostly the uh, tips, so tip of the nose, uh, tip of the um, ear lobules, and then toes and fingers. These are the areas where uh, there is rich supply of capillaries, and then because of the vasospasm, definitely the oxygenation will not be there. So because of that, the tissues will necrose, and then we can see ulcerations in these parts. So ear, tip of the ear, nose, and fingers and toes will cause this kind of force bright nature so you can see this is a picture of extreme cyanosis in the fingertips so you can see uh, wet gangrenous formation and then you can see a granulation tissue uh, in the toes hypothermia so hypothermia is a generalized effect of Cold. So where the two we have seen, the trench foot or immersion foot and then forced weight, they are localized effects of extreme cold, whereas the generalized effect of uh, exposure to cold will cause hypothermia. So exposure to cold produces hypothermia. So what is hypothermia? If the temperatures, if the oral and axillary temperatures are less than 35 degrees centigrade, then we call it as the person is suffering from hypothermia. If the oral or axillary temperatures are less than 35 degrees centigrade and we then we can diagnose that the person is suffering from hypothermia there are three stages in the development of hypothermia stage one stage two stage three in stage one first the body feels cold and shivering so it is a normal uh, thing so this kind of shivering uh, we know that uh, the muscle shivering or muscle shaking will produce some kind of heat. So the body tries to get the heat from the mechanism 
called shivering so shivering you know uh, when anybody gets fever say for example like malaria or typhoid there will be intermittent chills and triggers so these chills and triggers are due to the body tries to increase the heat increase the heat in order to avoid the cold so the body feels cold so thereby there will be shivering and the stage 2 is if the temperatures are below 32 degrees centigrade the person becomes uh, lethargic drowsy and the basal metabolic rate decreases very much and oxygen to the tissues are reduced because you know the body tries to conserve the energy because heat whenever there is a production of heat the consumption of energy will be more so in order to decrease the consumption of energy the body will decrease the basal metabolic rate so that the oxygenation of the tissues can be reduced and then the third stage is if the temperature is below 27 degrees centigrade then death can occur due to anoxia so hypothermia is a generalized effect of exposure to the cold when we call it as hypothermia when it is less than 35 degrees centigrade three stages uh, first stage of there will be shivering next there will be lethargy bmr will be low and then third one is anoxia stage of anoxia where it can further lead to death paradoxical undressing paradoxical undressing is a condition seen uh, in accidental hypothermia the same thing where it may be due to failure of vasoconstriction uh, of the cold you know in very cold the same generalized effect of hypothermia you can see in some in some places where there is exposure to severe cold the person will be uh, seen undressing normally in cold seasons we will have we take more amount of clothes two three clothes we will have the uh, any cool items or woolly items in order to keep us warm but here this is a one condition where if there is a failure normally if there is a failure of vasoconstriction so vasoconstriction will cause <coughs> the body to conserve the heat so if there is a failure of this vasoconstriction in the body leading to vasodilatation so whenever there is a vasodilatation dilatation of the blood vessels in the tissues the body feels that it is a little bit warm so because the body is warm the person will take out his clothes and then finally he will die so whenever a police investigating officer will see a person in a room where there is a disturbances of the things and then you can see the he will be lying under the table in order to just uh, get the uh, out of his vomit and then he will undress because he feels that he is a little bit warm so in order to get rid of himself he will remove the uh, clothes and then he will die there so whenever the police officer will be coming he will suspect some other foul play mostly sexual intercourse in case of if the body is in a uh, female naked case so but the thing is here it is a normal uh, uh, means uh, phenomena seen in uh, hypothermia cases where if there is a failure if the normal recovery mechanism of the body has been lost this hypothalamo uh, temperature regulation of the body if it is lost then there will be vasodilatation peripheral vasodilatation if the peripheral vasodilatation is there the body feels that the body is warm so the person in order to keep himself a uh, little bit relaxed he will remove the clothes and then finally he will die so this is called paradoxical undressing normally in cold seasons you should be throwing more clothes on the body but here there is paradox means he will be undressing in cold season the reason is the failure of vasoconstriction or failure of um, the normal uh, hypothermia maintaining the temperature maintaining mechanism so next coming to the hyperthermia so hyperthermia we have three stages in hyperthermia normally we see uh, in newspapers like the person has died because of the heat stroke or sometimes called sunstroke so sunstroke or heat stroke is uh, due to hyperthermia mostly in extreme hot environments and mostly children and uh, elderly population are 
uh, affected by this kind of uh, heat strokes. There are three stages in this heat stroke. One is the first stage is heat exhaustion, and the next one is heat cramps, and the third one is heat stroke. So first, whenever I told you, whenever there is extreme heat conditions in the surrounding environment, then the vas vasculature causes dilatation. Dilatation leading to, you know, uh, so that there can be dissipation of heat from the body. So vasoconstriction is to conserve the heat in the body. And then vasodilatation is to dissipate the heat from the body. So whenever there is hypothermia, hyper, sorry, hyperthermia or extreme heat conditions surrounding the person, there will be vascular dilatation. And because of this vascular dilatation, there is poor venous return. Because of this poor venous return, there is hypotension. So BP will go down. So that's why most of the people who are walking uh, in, in the hot summer for a prolonged time, they will collapse. Uh, because there is vasodilatation, there is decreased venous return, and then there is decreased hypo, so there is hypotension or decreased BP. So that's why whenever uh, a person is traveling in hot environments or walking, we advise people to drink a lot of water. So this condition is known as heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion where the person is hypotensive. Uh, because of the vascular dilatation decrease venous and the next one is heat cramps heat cramps if still further if the person is exposed to the extreme hot environments then the person will profusely sweat thereby there is a loss of water and electrolytes and this causes severe painful spasm of the voluntary muscles mostly the calf muscles uh, the calf muscles will be cause extreme spasm and twisting of the muscles will occur uh, thereby it will cause severe pain so this severe pain is due to dehydration and uh, loss of electrolytes so mostly potassium potassium will be lost of course some of the sodium will also be lost so mostly uh, there is profuse sweating leading to loss of water and electrolytes and then there is spasm of the voluntary muscles mostly calf muscles so this leads to heat cramps. So the first stage is heat exhaustion, where there is hypotension, and then there is loss of electrolytes and water. There is dehydration, and then there is loss of electrolytes, leading to heat cramps. So the third stage is heat stroke. In this, there is impairment of the normal heat regulating mechanism. So further, the person is still exposed to the heat, so the person uh, still, there is the person, the body cannot regulate. Normally, the sweating or vasodilatation is a mechanism by which the body wants to try to dissipate the heat of the body. But still, if the person is not gone to the cold environment, then there will be still the point, uh, the body, uh, the regulatory mechanism will give up. Thereby, there is impairment of heat regulating mechanisms. And then there is impaired sweating because of thus, the sweating will not occur and then the person becomes unconscious uh, because the sweating will not occur the heat will not be removed from the body and because of that the person will have an effect on unconsciousness and brain and then it will lead to heat stroke so this is the normal otherwise known as sunstroke so normally it is in newspapers it is called a sunstroke so mostly you can have, have read that uh, that because of the sunstroke, so and so people have died in so and so area, and mostly uh, the children and elderly population are susceptible because of uh, their regulatory mechanism in children. Their regulatory mechanism is mostly initial and uh, very new, so that's why they are susceptible. Even the body surface area is very less, so that's why they are very uh, prone to these kind of conditions. And then also in elderly populations where this mechanism is impaired. In that case, this loss of sweating is there and then unconscious and that lead to heat stroke. So the conditions, the three stages of hypotheremia is heat exhaustion, heat cramps, and heat stroke. Heat cramps, heat prostration is otherwise known as also this heat exhaustion. Heat cramps, there is rapid dehydration, workers working in high temperatures, 
are, uh, are associated with these heat cramps. The onset is sudden with painful cramping of the muscles of the leg and abdomen. Heat prostration, otherwise called heat exhaustion, both are same. Heat prostration means nothing but to fall down. So normally the persons walking in heat, they will fall suddenly because of the vasodilatation and decrease in venous return and thereby the hypotension will result, thereby the person will fall down. So there is collapse, the person without increase in body temperature because of exposure to excessive heat and it is precipitated by muscular work and unsuitable clothing. So mostly a person who uh, works uh, manual labors, uh, working in very hot summer season will be undergoing this heat prostration or heat exhaustion. So in heat exhaustion, the pupils will be directed and then uh, death is due to heart failure in case of uh, still if it is not further treated immediately you have to resuscitate it by giving fluids and then heat stroke otherwise known as sunstroke otherwise known as thermic fever otherwise known as heat hyperparexia so when the body has the rectal mostly the rectal temperature is greater than 41 degrees centigrade then we call it as a heat stroke here the hypothalamic temperature regulatory center is deranged and then because of that, there is a loss of sweating. Because there is a loss of sweating, it will affect the neurological systems, which like psychosis, delirium, convulsions, coma, and finally death is seen. So what are the predisposing factors for this? Heat stroke is very high temperature, increase in humidity. There can be minor infections in the body. And then muscular activity, increase in muscular activity, heavy work in hot, su hot summer, and then lack of acclimatization. So a new person who is not at all uh, new work, not at all acclimatized to the environment, if he does and does, does heavy work in the summer, uh, then he can undergo this kind of uh, heat strokes. So what are the clinical features of heat stroke? The onset is sudden with collapse or unconsciousness. The skin is dry, hot, flush, with absence of sweating. The pulse will be rapid, but it is and also irregular because of hypotension, because of hypovolemia. Because of dehydration, there will be hypovolemia. So because of that, the pulse will be rapid and it is irregular. And the breathing is rapid and deep. And then we know that there is hypotension. So very important clinical features. It is sudden in onset and then the skin is dry, hot and flush and very, very important feature is there is absence of sweating. There is absence of sweating and then the pulse will be rapid and irregular and breathing is, will be rapid and deep and hypotension is low. The fatal period is five minutes to three days. Very important. That's why whenever if we see anybody falling down immediately, if it is due to heart summer, then we have to to, uh, give him some fluids uh, to make him uh, revive. So what are the PM findings? So temperature, uh, they remain high even after death. Very, very important. So even after uh, death, temperature of the body can be very high. So brain can show features of congestion. There can be edema. Uh, Petechial hemorrhages can be seen in the white matter. And then the trachea and bronchi can Cause can contain a hemorrhagic fluid, frothy hemorrhagic fluid. Lungs will be seen, there can be congestion, edema, and hemorrhages can be seen. And then internal organs are all congested. So, most of the uh, organs are congested, and brain is edematous, and trachea are filled with uh, frothy hemorrhagic fluid. Lungs are congested, hemorrhagic, uh, and then internal organs, uh, like kidneys, they're all congested burns next topic in uh, thermal injuries are burns so burns can be caused due to a variety of uh, causes you know burns uh, we, by definition it is caused either due to heated objects or by any uh, chemicals so heated metals or flames or kerosene or petrol or any explosion can cause a burn 
X-ray fill, X-rays can cause gamma rays, can cause burns. That's why exposure to X-rays unnecessarily is not advised. UV rays, so sun rays can cause burns, and then radiation heat, chemical burns, electrical burns, electrical electricity can cause burns, and then lightning, and then radio waves. So these are the some of the means by which uh, burns can occur. Heated metals. Flames, kerosene or petrol explosions, X rays, UV rays, radiation heat, chemical burns, electrical burns, lightning, and then radio waves. So, these are the electrical burns you can see singeing, singeing of the hair is there. So, this is the high voltage electrical burns. This is immediately after on the left side, and then after eight days. Uh, this is how it looks. So this is an electrical burn. So this is a lightning burn. We call it as filigree burns. So this burn is due to lightning. Uh, we call it as filigree burns. Uh, it it looks like a pond tree pattern. Pond tree pattern. Uh, it's just like a tree it's like a uh, pond tree so whenever the lightning strikes this kind of burns can be uh, seen so by classification burns is of two types two one is duplicates classification and then wilson's classification not it, it is not really sons it is wilson's so the degree of burns is classified by these two scientists, Dupuytren's classification and Wilson's classification. Dupuytren's have classified injuries or burn injuries into six degrees, from first degree, second degree, third, fourth, and fifth and sixth degrees. Whereas Wilson's has classified into three types. One is epidermal burns, dermal burns, and then deep burns. So we will see what are these uh, epidermal dermal. So both are interrelated. interrelated. So we will see how Dupuytren's has classified and then uh, Wilson's has classified. We will briefly discuss this and we will close. So epidermal. So whenever a heat, heat is applied to the epidermal layers of the skin, there can be redness of the skin. And then there can be blister formation in the form of vesicle or bullet. Very, very important. So whenever there is a superficial burn, so there can be redness in the burn. And then there will be blister formation in the form of vesicle or bullet. There can be singeing of hair in the surrounding region. And then these uh, epidermal burns are very, very, very painful because of the exposure of nerves uh, there will be very painful burns and then repair completely without scar formation so healing is complete in case of epidermal burns where the features are there can be redness whenever there is a flame burn or a hot liquid there will be redness there will be uh, vesicle formation and there will be singeing of the surrounding hair and then there will be these are extremely painful because of the exposure of the uh, nerve endings to the outside and then this is completely uh, recoverable without a scar formation the next one is dermoepidermal burns dermoepidermal burns where the whole dermis and epidermis is involved in the burn area whereas in the first case only epidermis is involved so here the whole thickness of the skin is involved and then there is a depression area and there is coagulation necrosis surrounded by reddish inflamed skin and then this reddish inflamed skin uh, associated with this coagulated necrosis looks like a brown or black with sharing or sr formation so sr formation is a feature of dermo epidermal burns so there is coagulation necrosis surrounded by reddish inflammation of the skin and then there is blackening with charring and SR formation. And the whole thickness of the skin is involved in this dermoepidermal bones. 
this heals with scarring so this is also painful uh, because here also the nerve endings have been exposed the skin uh, is exposed so the nerve endings are exposed most of the nerve endings are there on the skin so if the skin is involved dermoepidermal then nerve endings are exposed so it is also painful and it heals with scar formation whereas the epidermal burns it will not heal with scar formation and next one is last one is deep burns deep burns is where there is gross or total destruction of skin subcutaneous tissue muscle bone etc so even the bone can be involved in case of these deep burns and the nerve endings are completely destroyed because of this it is a painless lesion so whenever a burn is a painless means you can assume that it is a very deep burn so because the nerve endings have been completely destroyed by the burn so the person can no longer feel the pain so deep burns means there is destruction of the skin subcutaneous tissue muscle and heart burns so the burn parts are completely charred and then healing will also will occur with the uh, scar formation or sometimes even you have to do a graft so this is a picture showing the first degree otherwise called as the superficial burn and then the second degree burn called partial thickness burn where both the epidermis and dermis are involved and then full thickness burn otherwise called as third degree burn where you can see the muscle is also a little bit involved so first degree burn where only the epidermis is involved you can see where you can see there is redness there is bulla formation and then it is extremely painful and then uh, it will heal without any scar formation partial thickness or second degree burn where there is dermis and sometimes the epidermis is also uh, um, involved epidermis and dermis is involved so and then you can see here also it is painful condition because the nerves are exposed and then it will heal with scars because uh, dermis is involved so collagen is involved so it will have uh, healing with scar formation there's full thickness uh, burns or third degree burns where it involves the muscle it involves the bone so because of that uh, uh, it is not painful injury because the nerves have been completely destroyed so superficial burns you can see only uh, the superficial areas are involved we can see the zone of necrosis there will be coagulation necrosis at the center and then there will be surrounding edema layer will be there and then there is zone of injury or stresses and then normal tissues will be there so this is the uh, layers of injury where there is in the center there will be necrosis coagulation necrosis there will be surrounding edema and then there will be surrounding zone of injury or stasis and then the normal tissue will be there so deep burns this is the picture you can see there is zone of necrosis edema layer will be slow and zone of injury will be high you can see the zone of injury length will be high uh, edema layer will be less and then necrosis area will be high <coughs> here you can see full thickness burns where the zone of necrosis is very high you know whole part of is going to be necrosis in this cup full thickness uh, burns at third degree burns so this is another uh, diagrammatic representation superficial partial thickness and full thickness so you can see a red skin and then superficial i told you superficial burns are burns where epidermis is only involved and then pain is extremely present here and then partial thickness where both epidermis and dermis are involved here also pain is more uh, and then in, pa in full thickness or deep uh, we have charring and then there is no pain there is no pain uh, because uh, the nerves have been completely destroyed and it involves uh, the bone and the muscle also so these are the So these are the deep burns. This is full thickness burn. 
So this is the superficial one, the first degree one where only the epidermis is involved. So this is the second degree one where the epidermis and the dermis is involved. And this is the third degree where the epidermis, dermis and the muscle tissue is also involved. So effects, what are the effects of uh, burn? I think we will see very important rule of nine. Uh, how to calculate the percentage of uh, burns? We will see this rule of nine and then we'll close. So the effects of burns, they in involve the degree of heat. So how much heat there has been, how close the person is to the fire, how close the person is how long he has been holding the electric wire. So it all depends upon the degree of heat and the degree of exposure, the extent of surface area involved and the parts of the body that are involved because uh, the head and the face, uh, these are the very important front of the chest. If they are involved more then the death rate will also be more on the age. If it is children, extremes of age, the death rate will be high and sex also, mostly females, are involved in this case of thing. So rule of nine, it has been asked many times in the examination, rule of nine, how to calculate uh, the percentage of the burns in the body. So we will divide the body into these uh, six or seven parts, and then we will assign a number to them. So mostly we'll give for the adults, you can see the nine. So for head and neck region, if the burns are involved in the head and neck region, then we call it as we give 9% 9% burns. On the front of trunk, this front of trunk, uh, here you can see 18%, but it is divided into two type in, into two parts, uh, the front of chest and the front of abdomen. So front of chest is 9%. The front of abdomen is 9%. So total 9 plus 9, 18%. And you can see back of trunk. So back of trunk, again, back of chest is 9%. And then back of abdomen is 9%. So total it is coming to 18%. And then upper limbs. Upper limbs, it is whole upper limb. So the front of uh, upper limb, 9%. And then the back of upper limb is 9%. So total. 18%, whereas lower limbs, because the muscle mass is high and the surface area is high, we are given more percentage. So front of the lower limb, it is 18%, back of the lower limb, it is 18%. So thigh, you can see the front of thigh, 9%, front of leg, 9%, back of thigh, 9%, back of, uh, you have to see like that. And then genitalia is 1%. So if you add all these things, it will come to 100%. So this is how we will give the percentage of burns in a patient if the person comes to the casualty and then we will decide uh, what is the outcome of this burn. So if it is the, the burns, surface area of the burns is greater than 40%, uh, then the risk is more, uh, 40 to 50% means there is every chance that the person will die. So if the immunity or if the status, if the if if there was only superficial ones, the person can survive. But if it is greater than 40 to 50 percent, there is least chances the morbidity and mortality will be high. Uh, you can also see whereas it is different for children and infants, the percentage uh, uh, allocation of the burns area is different. In case of infant, it is called a rule of 20. So in case of adults, we call it as rule of nine. Whereas in case of infants, we call it as rule of 20. You can see for head and neck, we give 20%. For front of trunk, we give 20%. Back of trunk, 20%. Upper limbs, 20%. Lower limbs, 20%. And genitalia, 0%. Whereas in case of children, it is a mixture of both these. Head and neck, we call it as means, uh, infant means less than one year, of one year age. Whereas child is greater than two years of age and uh, maybe about less than 14 to 18 years of age. So head and neck, we give 15%, front of trunk 20, back of trunk 20, upper limbs 20, and then lower limbs 15. The genitalia can be of zero to 1%. So rule of nine, 
is very important has been asked many times in the examination so it is seen in case of adults to know the percentage of burns on the body surface area so we will close uh, here and then we will continue in the next class we will say about what are the electrical burns and other thing um, so please uh, go through this uh, chapter uh, we will and uh, anyway the examination dates have been uh, announced so please prepare for your uh, examinations also thank you uh, thank you all for joining